Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, first, I want to tell you that I will get a better camera set up. It's in the process. Uh, of course, here in Quebec, we're still in lockdown, so it makes matters a bit more complicated, but I'm going to try to make an effort to improve the, the, the visual quality of the content, as well as use more diversified videos, including some training videos and, and more technical work in the gym. That having been said, a pretty cool video for you guys today. Uh, because it's kind of an up, a hot topic. If you look at, there are very few topics that have the potential for make you enemies for life. Uh, you have politics, you have religion, and you have dieting, right? Especially when it comes to either keto or, or vegan type dieting, because these are very polarizing uh, topics. And when you are in that cult, if you want to call it that, uh, you become so emotionally attached to that way of eating that it's kind of hard to have an objective discussion. But that's what I'm going to be trying to do today. The topic of today is, is keto dieting appropriate for lifters? So, so let's get started. I'm going to try to make myself a bit bigger, which is our goal of all, right? So keto dieting, is it good or bad? Just like everything, right? There will always be pros and cons to every type of, of diet or training program. It's just a matter of finding out if the pros outweigh the cons or, or vice versa to see if the outcome will be satisfactory to you guys. Now, first word of warning, we saw uh, recently the uh, uh, um, feedback from a client, a subscriber who gained like 100 pounds of muscle just by liking and subscribing to the videos. And I really love seeing those stories. And many of you have commented in uh, the, the comment section that you had similar transformation in muscle gain simply by liking the videos. And I think that that's fairly normal. I, I fully expect every one of you who subscribe and like to gain roughly 15, 20 pounds of muscle in the first day upon uh, doing those actions. Sadly, we sometimes have side effects from, from the very high anabolic response to this channel. So for example, I was contacted by Michael from Sarasota and he, he gave me the, the story of his son, right? He, by accident, his son glimpse on my channel and he instantly gained 60 pounds of muscle, which might sound cool. I guess it kind of is, but he got kicked out uh, uh, away from his, his Pop Warner football team because he killed two opposing players and he also severely injured the mascot, which was saved only by the thickness of his costume. So, so be careful, guys. Okay, this is powerful stuff, and I do appreciate any subscription that you send my way, any like, any comment that really helps me out. Uh, but there are potential drawbacks. So just be careful, please. All right, so get, let's get to our topic at hand. Uh, what a lifter should be looking for a diet? Because that's what we need to ask ourselves if we are to answer is keto a good way of eating if you're interested in getting muscle, getting stronger, getting more powerful and, and whatnot, or leaner, right? So, so if you're a lifter, chances are that one of your main goal is building muscle, okay? Because you want that lean muscular physique and certainly losing fat will be part of the equation also once you build the muscle you want. But I think first and foremost, the biggest challenge will be to add muscle. To be honest, building muscle is a lot more complicated or difficult than losing fat. Uh, I mean, it, 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 losing 10 pounds of fat is, is very easy. You can, you can achieve that with just minor nutritional tweaks. But gaining 10 pounds of muscle is amazingly hard. So, so that's the first thing we need to look for the diet because every diet has the potential to easily make you lose fat if you have the right uh, protein intake and if you have the right caloric intake. Uh, but building muscle might be more challenging with some diet. So we need first to look at the potential muscle building effect of a diet to see if it's adequate for a lifter. And the first thing that we need to look at is, of course, protein synthesis. Will your diet provide a good stimulus and a good material to take advantage of the protein synthesis? Uh, that will be increased from training, but will the diet in itself contribute or hurt your chances of increasing protein synthesis? Then we will look at 
uh, will the diet be adequate to provide you with what you need to perform in a session? Uh, it, it could be neurological activation, could be energy substrate, but you want to be able to perform at your best during your workout. Otherwise, while well, you won't be able to stimulate maximum muscle growth because the workout itself is a trigger to force the body or to coax the body into building more muscle tissue. And if performance is suboptimal, then there's uh, no chance that you will get maximum growth from your workout. So you, the, the diet needs to support the workout themselves. If you have no fuel, if you have no motivation, no drive to train, then you won't be able to progress as fast as possible. Third point we need from a diet is optimizing recovery. Now we understand physiological recovery. Part of it, part of which is the protein synthesis we already address in point number one, because re repairing the damaged muscle tissue from training and rebuilding it bigger is part of the recovery process. But we are also talking about replenishing energy stores as well as making sure that the nervous system is in the right mode to be able to recover faster. We're gonna to touch on that in a, bit, in a moment. And finally, your diet needs to make you feel good. I mean, it's kind of hard to train balls out and go past the pain barrier if you feel like total crap, right? If you feel like a larva, if you have no energy, no drive, if you have huge mood swings, if your self-esteem is down, it's gonna be really hard to train effectively. So, so these are the four main things, in my opinion, you should be looking for uh, a, a diet, in a diet when you decide which way you're going to be going with uh, your training. So if we look at the first part, keto and protein synthesis, let's look at what keto has from a positive standpoint and a negative standpoint when it comes to supporting and stimulating protein synthesis. First of all, obviously, keto being primarily proteins and fat, or more precisely fats and protein, because that's the point, right? A lot of people think they're doing a keto diet, but they're really not. If protein intake is too high, let's say it's 50 or 60% of your caloric intake on a keto diet, chances are that you might not get quote unquote keto adapted because the body will simply take the extra amino acid and turn them into glucose. And that will actually maintain a fairly stable blood sugar level, which will diminish the, the potential to, uh, to turn to ketosis as your primary fuel source. Furthermore, by having a very high protein intake, you can actually trigger an insulin response, which could also hurt when it comes to entering ketosis. So a true keto diet especially in the initial stage of the diet, which is the uh, ketosis induction phase, you normally need at least 60% of your caloric intake coming in from fat. So you still have more than enough protein to trigger uh, up or to benefit from the protein synthesis, uh, but it's not as high as some people might think. So it's roughly, but, but, it, but you have more than sufficient amino acid, both to trigger protein synthesis because uh, an increase in, in blood amino acid level will actually act as a stimulus for protein synthesis, especially if we are, if it's high in leucine. Uh, and of course, if you eat meat and stuff like that, or, or if you eat eggs, uh, if you have a casein protein, then you will have a high amount of leucine. So that should not be a problem. You will also have enough complete protein to support uh, the muscle growth process. So it, it's one thing to turn on the protein synthesis that you will do that by elevating protein intake, but also with the training. So, so to take advantage of the increase in protein synthesis from the workout, you need sufficient amount of all the amino acids. That's actually the downside of a vegan diet, okay? Yes, you can get plenty of protein from uh, vegan sources, but oftentimes you will lack some of the amino acids, which will diminish your capacity to build muscle. That is not a problem with a keto diet. You also will have uh, more than enough fat and cholesterol to support testosterone production. So, so that's actually uh, quite a significant benefit when it comes to keto dieting. Normally, it supports the production of sex hormone testosterone and also estrogen in women, which is actually anabolic. People forget that estrogen 
is anabolic also, mainly because it increases IGF-1 level. And, and finally, it, it is possible with a keto diet to have enough calories to support muscle growth. Fat is pretty dense in calories, so it's, it's normally pretty easy to achieve that. Now, some cons when it comes to protein synthesis. Uh, first, you will get less mTOR activation from the keto diet because insulin uh, and even carbohydrates are one of the main triggers of increasing mTOR. In fact, one of the reasons why a keto diet is so effective at slowing down the aging process is by minimizing mTOR activation. In fact, uh, I've seen some theories that a keto diet or intermittent fasting could be a good way to slow down the development of cancer cells and by minimizing both IGF-1 and mTOR, right? So while it's good for anti-aging, mTOR is uh, one of the main triggers for protein synthesis. So if you get less of an mTOR activation, uh, then you might get a lower anabolic response or protein synthesis. You will also get lower insulin, and insulin is not the enemy. Insulin is one of the most anabolic hormone in the body, and elevating insulin will also elevate IGF-1, which is even more anabolic. So these two hormones play a big role in the uptake of protein amino acids by the muscles and also in the repair process, protein synthesis. So if you have a lower level of these hormones, then it's possible to have a lower protein synthesis level. You will also tend to have less <coughs> lactate production from a keto diet, mostly because uh, mostly when you become keto adapted and you don't rely on glucose for fuel as much. Lactate is the, the, the byproduct or the metabolite of utilizing glucose for fuel. So if you don't rely as much on glucose, then you don't produce as much lactate or lactic acid, which can be actually beneficial in, in certain athletic events. But when it comes to muscle growth, it might be a negative because lactate in itself can be anabolic by minimizing myostatin levels, right? Uh, finally, a, a keto diet at an equal caloric intake. So if you have a diet that is zero carbs and a diet that is moderate or even high in carbs, at the same caloric level, the low carb dieting will lead to higher cortisol levels. Uh, the reason is that one of the, the functions of cortisol is mobilizing stored glycogen. So when your blood sugar level drops down, you need to bring it back up. And cortisol and glucagon are the two main hormones that will do that. So the cortisol <clears throat> will be released when blood sugar dips down and it both mobilizes stored glycogen or break down, breaks down amino acid, muscle tissue into amino acids to turn those amino acids into glucose. So one of the argument uh, that the keto guys will use is that even without carbs, you can maintain a stable blood sugar level because you will simply turn amino acids into glucose, which is true. But part of the process means that you will either use the, the amino acids you have eaten or more likely you will break down some muscle tissue into amino acid to turn them into glucose. And that requires a higher cortisol level, which also leads, by the way, to a higher adrenaline level, but more on that in a moment. So personally, I do believe that a keto dieting might be slightly less effective than a, 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 a diet containing carbohydrates at an equal amount of protein when it comes to triggering protein synthesis and supporting muscle growth. I'm not saying that it doesn't work at all. In my opinion, it's less efficient. Now, of course, if you are using steroids, that's a non-issue because the steroids will be able to trigger protein synthesis regardless of the diet you are eating. So that's one thing you need to consider is the, the jacked keto proponent using steroids because if he is, it changes the body's reaction to the diet. Now, keto dieting and lifting performance. We have pros and we have cons, of course, like with everything, it's a matter of putting that into context and looking at the, at the, 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 the overall outcome. Now, the pros of keto and lifting performance. First, you will have a higher level of adrenaline and dopamine from the keto diet. The adrenaline is easily explained by the fact that a keto diet leads to a higher cortisol level, which I explained a moment ago. Like 
You will really, since you need to mobilize glucose or break down muscle tissue to mobilize amino acids to maintain a stable blood sugar level because you're not eating any carbs. You, have, you need to make the carbs from something, right? Uh, well, then you will release more cortisol to do that. And one of the effect of increasing cortisol is that you also increase adrenaline. Cortisol increases the conversion of noradrenaline into adrenaline. So a lot of people report much higher energy when they shift to a keto diet. That's true. But the reason why they have more energy is because the keto dieting increases adrenaline. And that's exactly the same thing that happens with intermittent fasting. You're not eating for 16 hours. Your blood sugar level will go down. So you increase cortisol to bring it back up and you increase adrenaline in the process, right? So that's not real energy because they, that energy comes with a drawback, which we will see in a moment. Uh, you also increase dopamine because normally a, a diet that favors protein and fats over uh, carbohydrates will tend to lead to a higher dopamine production, uh, which can be a good thing because it tends to help you curb your cravings. Anyway, so there will also be less intramuscular acidification, as I mentioned earlier, less lactate and lactic acid accumulation. Uh, by the way, the, the, the acidic feeling, the burn feeling you get is not so much from the lactate itself. It's from the hydrogen ions that are, are released at the same time. But it, it, it all happens at the same time. So it, it's still still adequate for, for comments. So by having less intramuscular acidification, oftentimes it helps you be able to do more reps uh, at a certain weight. It, it can help you with resistance, for example, in... Uh, 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 Activities where you would normally have tons of lactic acid, if you have less, then you can keep pushing for, for a bit longer. Uh, so an injury in sport, it can also be pretty pretty effective. It can lead to higher carnosine level because normally that keto diet is, is higher in, in animal protein, uh, which can also increase uh, muscle resistance. Uh, and finally, it, <coughs> it can increase acetylcholine level because uh, foods that are high in choline uh, tend to be animal protein food, like, like beef, like liver, uh, like eggs, very high in choline. And acetylcholine is a very important neurotransmitter when it comes to uh, motor coordination, when it comes to motor learning, when it comes to power production and speed of contraction. So, so it's very important to support acetylcholine level. Now, the counter argument is that you don't have to be on a keto diet to ingest those nutrients. So you could be eating eggs and, uh, and beef and liver without being keto, but still on a keto diet, you will normally get a pretty high uh, acetylcholine level increase or the raw material to produce said acetylcholine. Uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, the cons, well, normally will have less glycogen readily available when you're on a keto diet. You're not ingesting carbohydrates. Yes, you can replenish muscle glycogen by turning amino acids uh, and even the, 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 the glycerol skeleton of the fat you're ingesting. You can convert that to glucose, but that is not as efficient for replenishing muscle glycogen as eating carbohydrates. I mean, most people who go on a keto diet will report flatter muscles. Uh, so, so now... Having less glycogen readily available is not that much of an issue for pure strength work. So, for example, if most of the lifting you do is in the one to four, even five reps range, you probably will not have a, a drop in performance, at least not due to the fuel availability. Now, the dehydration or the loss of water weight that comes with uh, ingesting less carbohydrates could negatively impact the stability of some joints more than the second, which could decrease strength performance. But strictly from an energy availability standpoint, uh, a keto diet should not decrease strength work that much. So for example, when you have uh, lifters reporting good strength on um, carnivore diet, for example, I'm not surprised because it's that type of training is not dependent on glycogen stores. Now, uh, for endurance work, there are some data indicating that once you're keto adapted, it can actually help you with endurance work because you're better at utilizing fat and mobilizing fat for fuel, which is a positive. And you also produce less lactate, which helps you avoid that quote unquote wall. Um, now, 
Uh, you will also have less water retention. First, because you have less carbohydrates and carbohydrates store are stored in the muscle with water that will increase intramuscular pressure, which can push against the joint and stabilize the joint. Uh, you will also normally have a, a lower electrolyte consumption on a keto diet, and especially if you don't add salt to your meals, for example, sodium, potassium, tend to be a bit lower on a keto diet and compound it with a lower carbohydrate intake normally leads to a fluid loss. Uh, that's why lots of people are become quickly addicted to the keto diet because the first two weeks they might drop 10 pounds, most of it being water weight, but they have the illusion that it works extremely well for fat loss. So personally, I think that if you are mostly trading for strength, you can, you can get by on a keto diet, but you probably will have to supplement uh, electrolytes to, to try to minimize the water loss that, that will lead to the decrease in passive stability of the shoulder, of the joint, especially the shoulder joint, which would decrease strength performance. Uh, but if you supplement with sodium, with, with, with electrolyte, your strength performance should not be affected with a keto diet. But if you do pure bodybuilding work, especially with of, of a higher volume type, then it will be an issue. Uh, if you do low volume bodybuilding training, like uh, like Dorian Yates training, like, like Fortitude training, like DC training, like Mike Manzer training, that probably won't be an issue either because the volume is not high enough uh, to require like a large amount of muscle glycogen. Don't remember and don't forget that if you don't have a lot of glycogen or glucose available for fuel. Uh, and need to mobilize it, then you will release more cortisol to do so. So if you're on a keto diet and you are on a high volume lifting, the cortisol response will be even higher than for someone who ingests carbs. I mean, carbs is literally the number one supplement to lower cortisol level. Keto and recovery, okay? Pros and cons. Pros, well, once again, you have sufficient uh, protein intake to support the muscle repair process. So that should not be that much of an issue. Uh, once again, considering that you will also decrease, you don't have as much of an increase in, in mTOR insulin and IGF-1, which can slow down protein synthesis. But that part of the recovery process normally is, is doable on a keto diet. Uh, if you're using the right ratios of fats or more omega-3 fatty acids, uh, like you go with olive oil, you go with, uh, fish oil, you go with flax oil, whatever, uh, uh, then it can have anti-inflammatory effect, which is either good, but it can also be bad because if you reduce inflammation too much, you will also decrease uh, the muscle building uh, process because inflammation itself can be a trigger for muscle growth. Uh, but for example, if you take NSAID, like, like Motrin, like uh, Tylenol or, or whatever post-workout, it can actually, it will diminish protein synthesis. Um, so, so, and some studies with very, very high doses uh, of fish oil, I've, I've found the same thing. But in generally speaking, it can reduce inflammation, which is overall a good thing. Now, the high fat will also help nervous system recovery. Uh, and in fact, <clears throat> To have a healthy nervous system, you do need to have adequate fat intake. Uh, a keto diet will also increase GABA level. Uh, well, it does so by increasing the activity of the enzyme that converts glutamate into GABA. And that's a good thing for recovery because GABA is one of the neurotransmitters that helps you shut down the brain when it's too, too excited. So it can help you sleep better, okay? But, but not everybody will sleep better on a keto diet. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But the, the GABA increase is a good thing for recovery, especially recovery from very intense and or heavy lifting work. Okay. Now, the cons, well, it, it, the keto diet will lead to a higher level of cortisol. I mean, that's just a physiological truth. It, it also leads to lower IGF-1 and mTOR level, which can decrease protein synthesis compared to a diet with the same amount of protein, but also with carbohydrates, especially if the carbohydrates are consumed at the right period around the workout. It will also lead to a higher adrenaline which is a good thing when it comes to workout performance and even performance around the day because if your adre adrenaline is higher, your focus, your concentration, your motivation, your energy is higher. 
your, so, so you will perform better regardless of if it's a mental or a physical task. However, there's a risk of leading to what, what, what I call a training burnout or what most people call uh, overtraining, which is nothing more than making the receptors interacting with adrenaline downregulated. They basically are so much stimulated by adrenaline that they stop responding to it as a protection because overactivating that adrenaline effect can be a, a problem for the cardiovascular system, for example. Like you have people who will have a heart attack because they take too much stimulant. Well, that's because you overactivate those beta adrenergic receptors and the heart goes way too fast, go way too hard. That can lead to both short-term and long-term problems. So the body, to protect itself, when it senses that you're overstimulating those receptors, they will downregulate or stop responding to your own adrenaline. So if you produce too much adrenaline, the good thing is you have more energy. The bad thing is that you increase the risk of burning out when it comes to those receptors. It can also, a keto diet is also associated with a lower serotonin level. Now, GABA and serotonin are the two new main neurotransmitters that calm the brain down when it's hemmed up too much. I, I often say GABA is like the parking brake and serotonin is like the brake pedal. Like GABA is on or off, it shuts everything down, which is very important for, for sleep, for example. But serotonin allows you to modulate your level of activation. People who have problems switching from a high to a low, high to a low, for example, if you're in a situation when you need to be amped up, if you have low serotonin, it will be really hard to calm yourself down afterwards and be still at the right level to perform a mental task, for example. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter of brain adaptation. And, and if you have low serotonin, you will have problems dealing with sudden changes in the need, uh, in the brain requirement. It also makes you more likely that you will suffer from anxiety issue or depression issue. That's why some people, they go on a keto diet, they feel awesome more on that in a second, while others will actually feel more anxious and don't sleep as well. It depends on your natural brain chemistry. And obviously, uh, you have much slower glycogen replenishment from a keto diet because you just don't ingest carbohydrates. So you need to fabricate glucose from protein, which is a long uh, process especially if you don't, uh, and you can't, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you consume, let's say 200 grams of protein, you cannot use all 200 to make glucose. And even if you did, that will make probably 75, 100 grams of glucose, but you probably won't. So, so it's very hard to fully replenish muscle glycogen simply from amino acids because you would have to consume way too much. Another problem that I find interesting is, and I found that when I was working with bodybuilders using a low carbs diet, uh, because I used to be a low carb guy. I used to be a keto guy for years. I, I was keto for over 18 months straight. And I used keto dieting when I was preparing for, for photo shoot bodybuilding competitions and whatnot. But what I noticed is when I work with bodybuilders and I use a, a low carbs diet, after a few weeks, if I needed to peak them, so like use a glycogen load, they just wouldn't respond. Like if you go keto for most of your prep, it's almost impossible to do a, 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 car, a, a, glu, a glycogen circumpensation by having carbs at the peaking process, on the, like the day before a competition, for example. The body just doesn't deal well with carbs. And also, it actually reduces muscle insulin sensitivity. So essentially, it, it's harder to bring glucose in the muscle. And the reason is that the body wants to keep more of the glucose you're ingesting because you're not ingesting much to maintain a stable blood sugar level. So to prevent blood sugar from going too low, it will make the muscles resistant to insulin. So you will send less glucose to the muscle and more will be kept uh, for uh, the maintain a stable blood sugar level. That's one of the adaptation to keto dieting and one of the main issues of keto dieting, especially if you plan on uh, shifting away from keto after a while. So <clears throat> personally, I believe that keto dieting for when it comes to uh, bodybuilding type work is suboptimal when it comes to recovery. 
especially if you're in a dieting on process because of the high cortisol level. You will need to lower training volume much more if you are in a keto diet than if you're in a high carbs diet, if you want to avoid uh, the cortisol overproduction when, it, when you're dieting down. Now, when it comes to feeling good, which is another important aspect uh, of dieting process, because if you feel like crap, well, your life sucks, you have no enjoyment, your performance will drop, you can't train hard, uh, and it's, it's much harder to uh, stay strict with your dieting, okay? So feeling good is a neglected impact uh, of dieting. So if you look at keto dieting, it can actually make you feel better or worse depending on your starting brain chemistry. Someone, for example, okay, we know that keto dieting will decrease glutamate and increase GABA because it increases the conversion. Now, glutamate, people with too much glutamate will have huge mood swings. They will take everything personally. They can't deal with failure because glutamate is the emotional amplifier, okay? Uh, in reality, glutamate's one of its main function is to help with memorization, memory, but it does that by increasing your emotional load. The way the brain works is it's, it's selective. The memory is selective process. If you were to store in your memory Everything that happens to you during the day, you would go crazy. You can't store all of that. So the body or the brain will make decisions uh, regarding what will I store in my memory and what will be stored, uh, which will occupy a larger place in my brain, making it easier to bring that up front or, or to retrieve that information if I need it. And one of the ways the brain do that is the emotional load that is present when something happens. The greater the emotions are, positive or negative, the more likely you are to store what's happened to you at that moment in your brain, okay? Glutamate, by increasing the intensity of the emotions, increase also memorization, okay? Um, so glutamate, however, will also lead to huge mood swings because your highs are very high, but your lows are very low. People who suddenly go from this is the best day of my life to I want to shoot myself in a matter of hours without anything like happening in between, it's a glutamate issue. Not to mention that glutamate in excess is neurotoxic. So that can lead to depression. That can lead to uh, even a, it's also been associated with Alzheimer's disease, for example. Now, GABA is a good thing because it helps you deal with stress. So by, by increasing GABA and lowering glutamate in people with too much glutamate, a keto diet will actually make you feel better. People who have those huge emotional swings, people who are uh, too empathetic. Like glutamate is one of the main neurotransmitters of empathy. Uh, so it's a good thing to be empathetic, but if it's too much, like literally when a friend of yours has something bad happen to, to them and it hurts you more than it hurt them, well, that's going to just kill your, 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 your quality of life, right? And too much glutamate can do that. So lowering glutamate will like even your mood a bit. But if you have low glutamate, so you basically have no empathy and you're a social uh, asshole, then if you lower glutamate even more, then you're going to be like pretty much unbearable, okay? So that's a difference right there. Also, people with low GABA, if they go on a keto diet, they will sleep better. And they will have less anxiety because low GABA will lead to problems sleeping and problem uh, with anxiety. Now, if you already had high GABA, then increasing it further won't, won't, won't help you much more. So that's why you have a big a, a difference right from the start. It, now, as I mentioned, keto dieting tends to increase adrenaline and dopamine more than other types of diet besides intermittent fasting. So th that will give you plenty of energy and plenty of drive when that happens, but it comes at a cost, right? And the cost is possible overtraining, possible burning out, uh, uh, possible a hard, possibly a hard time to bring yourself back down to that high, from that high. So if, for example, you're training in the evening, adrenaline is sky high, it will be very hard to bring yourself back down and, and recover. So it can be a double-edged sword, okay? Now, people who already have too much adrenaline or people who can't break down adrenaline, and that, that's genetic, okay? If you have an enzyme called the COM2, 
T enzyme, catechol O methyltransferase enzyme that will break down adrenaline, help you and help you clear it away. Now, if you have a COMT enzyme that is very fast, what we call a fast comp, well, then you can break down that high amount of adrenaline that won't be an issue on the keto dieting. But if you have the slow comp type, the type of person who, when, let's say they have an incident, they get into a fight with someone, well, they will be amped up and pissed off for the rest of the day. They can't break adrenaline down. Then these people in the keto diet are much more likely to have problems sleeping and problem with burning out. So once again, there's a genetic component to it. Some people will respond well, some people will not. Now, it can lower serotonin. If you already have high serotonin level, that won't be an issue because you have plenty of it. But if you have low serotonin level to start with, then it can likely make you anxious, overthink everything, problems adapting to various situations, and maybe even like becoming depressed or having depression symptoms. So once again, depending on your brain chemistry, you're going to have different impacts when it comes to keto dieting. And finally, a keto dieting will increase acetylcholine, which is a good thing. It can actually help you learn better. It can help you be better coordinated. It can help you retrieve stored information in your brain more easily. It helps with creativity. So in that aspect, keto dieting is actually pretty good. So once again, it, it, can it make you feel good? Yes. Can it make you feel bad? Yes. It depends on your own brain chemistry. So what is my verdict when it comes to keto dieting and being a lifter? Well, to paraphrase uh, fellow trainer Eric Bach, you can build muscle while on a keto diet. Okay, uh, Just like you can go from New York City to L.A. on foot. It's just not the most efficient way of doing things. So personally, I believe that if you are on a keto diet for whatever reason, for anti-aging, for just maintaining a lower body fat uh, while being able to eat the food you enjoy, whatever, uh, that's debatable. But still, if it's just from personal preference, if it's because it motivates you to be on a keto diet, then be my guest. And yes, you can still build muscle. Yes, you can still get stronger. But in, from my experience and from the science, it will be a slower process than if you have carbs. Not saying you need huge amount of carbs, but, but carbohydrates, especially consumed at the right time, will help you recover, will help you build more muscle, will help you perform better in an hypertrophy type workout. Now, uh, when it comes to fat loss, as I mentioned, it can actually help some people. When you look at the data, the scientific data, uh, at an equal caloric intake and protein intake, when you look at a large population, keto seems to be exactly the same as uh, other types of diet. But the fact is that for some people, a keto diet will be more effective at, at losing fat, whereas for some people, it will not be as good as a more balanced diet. So I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying it's better. It will depend on, on you, okay? And you have to find that out for yourself. But for muscle growth, it will be suboptimal for more than 90% of the population. So I personally do use phases of, of keto dieting with clients, especially if I need to lower glutamate levels. For example, if I need to upregulate the enzyme responsible for mobilizing stored fat for energy, for example, I often start a diet a fat loss phase with four to six weeks of keto dieting. And gradually I add carbohydrates to the mix as volume also increases. So I use keto dieting as a tool, not as a main eating uh, philosophy. So that's my take on keto dieting for lifters. Once again, I was way longer than I expected, but I think it was worth it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.